just like that little lad that gave Jesus all he had and the multitude was fed from the fish and the loaves of bread what you have might not seem much but if you yield it to the touch of the master's lovely hands then you'll understand how your life will never be the same just ordinary people okay y'all hello y'all my name is Sheila Rollins and I am the founder of Shula Ministries Entertainment and Associates Inc and on this YouTube we are Overcomers Anonymous where we support anyone desiring to overcome anything and so okay so I'd like to thank you ahead of time for subscribing liking commenting sharing the video and also encouraging subscribe subscription as you share so today we are on our 60 i believe we're on 60 the 62nd of the 90 day destiny transformation series and so basically i wanted to talk about basically uh, like how to build a relationship with god more importantly how to filter or where to filter your new experience and so let's talk about it and it'll make more sense to you as we talk about it okay so excuse my voice i'm having a little problem with my head and i i really could not really sing the way i wanted to so anyway you get the gist of it you know so basically we have to trust god and so all through you know, trying to quiet your past and your history and take hold of the life that Christ died for us to have and also pursuing our purpose and our passion, we have to trust God, you know. And so stay with us as we basically discuss that, okay? Check out my other YouTube, which is The Pursuit to Christ, and a playlist on that YouTube and this one, which is Shula Ministries Overcomers Anonymous. So, okay, so when I think about that, I want to share a little experience with you and basically how I began to develop my relationship with God. I mean, it's pretty much the same way that we develop our relationship with another human being. Um, and so basically, like initially, if you're a woman and a man is pursuing you, you know, he's going to woo you a little bit, you know, do nice things for you, say nice things to you, spend time with you, you know, ask you for your number, try to get to know you and all those different things. And the same thing with Christ. And so basically, one of the first things that I start to do was to read the word. Um, reading the word is the great way to learn about God, because even though a lot of people will use the Bible as to say, if the people did it in the old times, Bible times, it's okay for us to do it too. Now, realize that Jesus is our only example. Now, while he may have different stories there for our learning, they're not always necessarily for us to mimic or to copy, okay? Definitely when we consider something like David and Bathsheba, you know, or Abraham and Sarah going from one country to another and lying and saying that they're brothers and sisters rather than saying that they're husband and wives. So, now, Christ is our only example. And so, but like I said, reading the word is a great way. You know, one thing that I learned about in reading the word is that um, I, knew that I learned the difference between what was tradition, and what was really actually in the word of God for us to follow. And that's very, very important, especially like for the times that we're living in, where the Bible talks about false prophets and false teachers and, you know, for even false Christ is going to rise in this time that we're living in. And so if we don't take the time to get to study the word of God, then how will we know what to follow? How do we know what's God and what isn't God? 
you know, in the same way, I'm sorry, y'all, in the same way in our, you know, and we did when we start to develop our relationships. I mean, for example, if you marry and you've been married a long time, go back to how it all began. Okay. Sorry. I just need to do this for a minute. Okay. Sorry about that. Okay. Go back to how it started in the beginning. You spent time, you know, so the way to spend time with God is to read his word. Another way is to pray. Like whatever comes up, like pray. I mean, there's been times like in my developing relationship with God where I had, um, um, you know, got into certain situations. I remember one time in particular, um, and I told y'all about this before. Um, I didn't have any money to for clothes for my oldest daughter for school. The little kids were little, they weren't in school yet, but the oldest girl, I didn't have any money. I mean, I had money for a tuition and um, books and, you know, first month um, tuition and registration rather. And at that point, God was saying, in order for her to have a relationship with me when she leaves home, she needs to start developing and you need to start bringing her into the things that you're praying for right now. And so I told my daughter, I said, Anika, come here. I said, I have money for your registration, your first month's tuition and books, but I don't have any money for clothes. So we're going to pray about it and see how God answered. And God really, really blessed. I mean, the Lord blessed her with shoes and pocketbooks and dresses and skirts and blouses and coats and all kinds of stuff. And it was a real big blessing. And so I know that she walked away with from that one incident with a confidence in God. And that's what it's about, a confidence in God. Like when we looked at the life that we lived before, for example, like the Bible says that Satan comes to kill, steal, and destroy. But Christ has come that we might have life and we might have it more abundantly. Well, with that life with Christ, you know, when bad things happen to us, um, we filter how we feel about ourselves, what we think about ourselves, what we think we can have, what we think we should do, where we should go, how we should dress, and all those different things through that experience. But now that we've accepted Christ as our personal Savior, we have to um, basically filter our new experience through what Christ did for us on the cross, okay? And because of that, our wholeness, our cleanliness, our completeness, the things that we thought were impossible, our forgiveness is what Jesus has done for us. And so he's just waiting. You know, the Bible says that we know how to give our children good gifts. How much more does God know how to give us good gifts? You're talking about the creator of the universe, you know, I mean, the riches, everything belongs to him. It's like nothing that we can possibly ask for is too big for Christ. You know, he has been a lot of things to me. And one time, you know, he was a lawyer in a courtroom. I remember I had gotten fired um, from this job and um, I hadn't done anything wrong. Actually, you know, it was a situation where um, and it was like telephone counseling. And I think I told you all this also before too. And the person for some reason didn't care for me. And so she was my support person when I was on the telephone sometimes, um, when we would have like a bad call, like it was like suicide, rape and, and that kind of call. And so when we get a call and we need to calm down and, you know, you know, get some comfort or whatever, we would have a support person. Well, she wouldn't answer me. And it turned out that I had an attempted murder, suicide on my hand. And um, they wouldn't allow the callers to call the police. They would have to, our support person would have to call the police. The police. We would have to keep on accepting calls and dealing with calls as they came in. Well, she wouldn't answer me. And so what happened is she fired me. She changed all the notes and everything in the computer. And it turned out that. When we went for the hearing, because I went and I applied for um, unemployment. And so when I goes up there, um, you know, it turned into this hearing. I mean, it looked like 
I was going to lose, not just the battle, but the war too. I mean, she came with armor. I mean, she had an assistant director with her. She had all these notes and everything that she had conjured up from the computer and all this stuff. You know, um, she had a situation where she said that she had talked to me over and over again about my behavior and all this stuff. And so by the time she finished with her testimony, the person that was hearing the case was pissed. He was pissed at me. And he didn't want to hear anything that I said. And so basically, when I tried to give my testimony, he was talking all over me, cutting me short, wouldn't listen to me and all that. So basically, the Lord said, say these three things. The first thing that I had to say was, okay, you listen to her, I listen to her without interruptions. All I'm asking for you is to give me the same respect. And then the Lord said, from all the times that you said that you talked to her, why did you keep her? Where is the document that she signed saying that you had these conversations about her behaviors? You know, and then the, then the Lord was saying, you know, basically in a computer, when a person is learning or whatever, can you go in and change mistakes that they make to correct it? And she, yeah, yeah, oh, sure. Well, isn't it possible also, when I wrote that this was an attempted murder suicide, couldn't you go in and change that? And see, she did. And to cover her butt, she fired me. You know, but the thing that she couldn't change, and this was the thing, and this was the third thing that God told me to say. Weren't the police called? And as a result, the police was able to go in and basically um, interrupt that murder-suicide because I called the police, okay? And that record she could not destroy. And as a result of the things that God told me to say, the things that God told me to do, I was not able to just win the battle, I won the war. And so I was able to get my unemployment. And she, however, got fired. And so the very thing that she did to me, it turned around and happened to herself. And see, and that's the thing that God would do for our enemies when we learn how to put our trust in him. And see, this is the other thing. When we worship the devil, he told us what to wear, how to wear it, what to eat, where to go, where to go, how to stay, how, how long to stay, what to drink, what to put in our veins, up our nose, and all that kind of stuff. And we cooperated. And then we want to get with Jesus, and we want to not agree. We want to try to do our own thing, you know. And this is the thing that I know for myself. My life was a mess before surrendering to God. But as a result of my surrender to God, it's the same as far as me not being able to do certain things. God through, does them through me. And it only looks like I did it. But I know how much I prayed. God, help me. Jesus, 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 help me. Help me, help me, help me, help me, help me. Jesus, help me, help me, help me, help me, help me. Yes, that's how I do it. Help me, Jesus. You know, like I lay in this bed sometime and I'm tempted to get up and go downstairs and fix some food. It's food in the refrigerator. I can eat anytime I want to. I'm a grown up. It's nobody to tell me. But see, the thing is, is this. When I want to honor my body, I want to do what God said, eat twice a day. You know, don't eat more than that. Don't eat and lay, and, and, and lay down on it. When I want to do all those things that I got to sit here and pray why Satan is tempting me. But see, the thing is, is this, because God or Jesus was tempted, the Bible says he's able to secure those that are tempted. That's us. So we don't have to worry about those things. And while Satan may be still pointing a finger at us saying, yeah, you know you was raped. Yeah, you was molested. You were beaten. You were spit on. You was this and that. You ain't nothing. And he, why he still wants to do that. And you can say, yes, that's true. However, 
because of Jesus. And see, when I look at the things that God had me to do, now I remember when I first started doing the children's story at church. Um, it was very close to the anxiety that I wasn't healed from, from having performance anxiety as a result of a teacher hitting me in my hand for getting a math pro problem wrong. Miss Spence, I give you your shadows for that. But anyway, um, during the night before, the day before, I couldn't sleep. The next morning, I couldn't eat. Whatever was going on in church before me standing up and dealing with children's story, I was a basket case. I couldn't sing. I couldn't stand up. I couldn't do that. I had to just sit there and pray. But when the Lord, when I was able to get up, where I was afraid of maybe, you know, forgetting details and stuff like that, I just surrendered. Just trusted God. And see, the whole thing of having to do it and to do it perfectly. Now, it's not to say that I didn't want to do my best because Lord knows that I wanted to do my best. But did I make mistakes anyway? Yes, I did. But however, my intent was to do my best. If perfection didn't come out, then oh well. But my best, I, I had to I had to settle with doing my best. And a lot of times people would talk about, you know, how much they liked when I would stand up and do the children's story. And I praise God for that because it was the Lord using me as a vessel or doing it through me. Like even right now when I cook, you know, uh, doing a vegan food, it's a different world, you know, from, from, from cooking, like same with meat. With meat, the meat is already there. But see, with veganism, I'm making the meat. I'm making what's, what's supposed to be meat. I'm making a drumstick or steak or spare rib or, or whatever. I, I'm making it, you know. And so, and I pray and God helps me to do it. So I'm telling you that you don't need to be afraid. Just give whatever you have to God, whatever, no matter how little you may think it is, give it to God. And I'm telling you, he would expand it. He would expand. It. He has already given us a measure of faith. And in, use, in order to use that faith, we got to ask him for stuff. We got to pray, pray to him. We got to read his word. We got to put him to the test. Lord, you said, Lord, you said this. And Lord, you said that. Hold him to it and watch him bless us. You know, the Bible says that seek ye first the kingdom of heaven and all these things will be added unto you. And so basically, you know, he, the Bible talks also about God giving us a desire of our hearts. These things are only going to come from Christ. Success, wealth, prosperity, whatever it is that is good, a good gift, it is only going to come from Christ. Christ, so we need to draw near, draw close, and accept what he has. You know, and so the greatest thing that he has for us is eternal life. And if we want that, we have to surrender our sins you know, sexual sins, um, you know, drugs, alcohol, drunkenness. He's not taking any drunkard. He's not taking the effeminate. They're not going with Christ. You know, we need to surrender those things, no matter how afraid, no matter that we don't know. And see, this was a thing for me. A lot of times I would be concerned about, well, God, I'm doing it right now, what you say. I don't know if I'm going to be able to do it in the next hour. I, I don't even know if I'm going to be able to do it tomorrow. Don't worry. Tomorrow will take care of itself. You know, I had learned like, I had to pray to God, you know, like N-A and, N -A and A, a say one day at a time. Let me tell you something. I had to do some things a moment at a time. One moment at a time. That's how tight it was for me, you know? So I can tell you firsthand, it is worth it. You know, find another place. Let Jesus and what Jesus has done for us on the cross, let it be the thing that we're filtering our new experience through, not from a devil in our past and how we were hurt and how we were harmed. That right there was done for the glory of God. And as we yield those things to God, he will peace promise to give us beauty, for ashes, beauty for those things, you know. And so 
while a person had complained about me like smiling and laughing and everything and she said it was fake and it was fake but i can tell you god has healed me from the inside out now i'm not saying that i arrived still got some more things but some of the worst things that i have experienced in my life god has healed me or is healing me and i'm in a such a level of glory with it it's almost as if sometimes i didn't experience it but i have but if i could tell you my story and where i've been you know what i'm saying my testimony you will not even believe it and when i tell it myself sometimes i just feel like saying really Sheila? but yeah it seems like I'm, I'm talking about somebody of long ago it doesn't even seem like i'm talking about me and what i've experienced you know so listen i love y'all Today is the Sabbath, so we can't talk about the food fundraisers, but we can say, remember the Sabbath day to keep it holy. Six days shall I labor and do all thy work, but the seventh day is the Sabbath of the Lord thy God. In it thou shalt not do any work, thou, nor thy son, nor thy daughter, nor thy manservant, nor thy maidservant, nor thy cattle, nor thy strangers that is within thy gates. For in six days the Lord made heaven and earth, the sea, and all that in them is, and rested the seventh day. Wherefore the Lord blessed the Sabbath day and he hallowed it. And so basically when we worship on the seventh day, which is Saturday, we honor our creator. Okay. You know, we honor our creator, our redeemer, our soon coming king. So, um, this is basically all I have for you. You know, remember to comment, uh, Please give me some thumbs up. It helps the YouTube comment. You can ask a question. You can drop a title, you know, um, or just say hello. But I love to hear from you. So this is all I have for you. I hope that it is help, helpful. Um, yeah, let's get a new filter and let that filter be Jesus Christ and what he's done for us on the cross. I love you and I'll see you in the next YouTube. Now unto him that is able to keep you from falling. And to present you faultless before the presence of his glory with exceeding joy. To the only wise God, our Savior, be glory and majesty, dominion and power, both now and ever. I love you. See you in the next year.